folks, I'm Ellie Little and this is your daily TA wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets and we do it from a different perspective, the neoclassical one, asking ourselves each time what happened today and what might it tell us about the coming ones. I do this show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of the Rocky Mountains. Folks, I am glad you could join me. It's the end of the week. We've had a lot going on this week. And despite it all, despite you know what looked to be times where this market was going to try to come down, fall apart, not the case. It just sits there and hangs. Are we back to the hang state, the state where we just can't fall? It certainly seems like that. If we look at the numbers here, the Dow is down 22, but that basically is flat, down 0.13. 16558 was the close, 22 lower. S&P's a quarter lower, 1883 and a half, sitting right at the highs. We'll look at the chart here in a second. Composite up 13. That's where the strength was today in the NDX and the techs. Money was pouring back into all those names it was pouring out of over the last two months. 4127 and a half was the close. NDX 12 and a third higher. 35.94 and a third in the Russell. Big winner today comparatively up almost half a percent, five points, 11.25, almost 11.26. We had gold down, it was down quite a bit more. I'm gonna talk about gold a little bit later in the show. 12 points lower, 12.85 and a half. Silver itself uh, also down today. And I, where do I have my silver? I don't have my silver on here. I don't. I have to put silver back on here. It was down today as well. The bonds up half a percent. Uh, we're going to have to talk about the bonds as well. Copper, dollar, flat, not much happening there. So talking about the bonds, the first thing to do is if you haven't been over to TA today and you check this out, come over and check out this bond melt up. I had a, had a member uh, give us a pointer. We were in the TNT room today. He gave us a pointer on this. It's a great take. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good piece. There's, there's an article here, and it actually points over to, uh, I think it was on Vester's Daily or someplace, but essentially it was an interview with, uh, uh, what was it, Gun, Gunlock. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Gunlock. I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, but it's a good interview, and, and it actually addresses what I've been asking and talking about for some time now, and that is, is what the heck is going on with bonds? Because if I pop in the bonds here, you can see today again, volume coming into these guys, they're pressing up to the highs, trying to get over them. As a matter of fact, I think it got over it at the close here. It looks like 11.99, yeah, it did. Closes over it with volume. And Gunlock is saying, and he's actually got a good point, and that is, is that with all the regulatory mess that has been put in place and I'm going to call it a mess because you know we don't we don't really solve our problems we just paper over them with more issues more regulations right but with with they with the regulations as they are and with the fed buying as much debt as it's been buying which is mortgage backed securities and bonds there's actually a shortage of bonds to go around there's not that much debt of the quality that needs to be bought and therefore the price keeps going up and it's a great take and, and I think he's spot on. It's uh, you know, I'm kind of ashamed that I didn't think about it and actually do the research to find it. But you know, that's why you got all these eyes and ears out there and you have to just pay attention to what other people are saying as well. And I've been thinking, hey, you know, the bonds going up are telling me that it's a fear trade. Well. Part of it probably is a fear trade. You got an ABCD structure here, right? Completes on the way up. Now you got another one there. It's going to try to complete on the way up as well. Bonds keep working higher. Part of it is security, but part of it is the fact that government, various institutions, let's put it that way because it's not just the banks, but various institutions have to have high quality debt in their portfolios and the large money center banks are a big part of that 
and there's just not enough of it to go around and so the price keeps pressing up another one of those you know when you, when you think about quantitative easing it's a program that's never been in place before and it causes distortions and as odd as it may seem this is one of those distortions and it's it's a it's a um, it's kind of an eye opener when you when you kind of think about it because this isn't the only one i'm sure there are many more that are taking place and there's going to be even more of them as it unwinds right if you think about the unwinding of all this you're going to have the same issues, um, you know, not the same issues, but you're going to have issues take place, unintended consequences, if you will, uh, that are going to cause problems. So let's go to the markets here, uh, take a look at what happened today. So let's let's start let's start with the S and P's, right? Because it's it's S and P's grind higher. I mean, I, they, that's kind of the story here. So we we start the week, try to press lower volume expands, right? Then this thing flips around and starts grinding, grinding, grinding as it's trying to go up. Now you get a little doji right here at the top. Volume pulls back. And what is this thing doing? Well, first of all, it's trying to get a breakout on an ABCD structure to the north. Right? That's the first thing it's trying to happen. But it just closes underneath it. Right? But we got the employment number tomorrow. So, you know, if you're a bull, you're set up exactly the way you want to be set up. Right, you've been going consolidation up here at these highs, so you're not you're not really stretched going into the number. But what you're really doing is you're going into this huge supply line, right? And this supply line just keeps pressing this thing back every time it comes up, and that's been true all the way since back here. So that range that's been in place, right, is still in place. It's been in place since the start of March. Here we are in May. That's eight weeks of sideways, right? Eight weeks, that's a long time. It's going to break one way or the other. You're set up to try to break to the north. But you know, folks, I'm not sure it's going to make it. And the reason for it is in some of the other charts, and we'll go to those next. You may get that pop up and test that high. You may even get over that high. But even if you do, I think this thing's going to get reeled right back in again. Let's go to the other guys. Uh, if we look at the Dow, the Dow actually had the ABCD structure in place, still does. Uh, it, didn't get any, it didn't get anything out of it today, but it's got the ABCD structure here, right? And it got over that little high, and it's trying to go up here and attack that high as well. So both of these set up basically the same way, the Dow just a little bit stronger. It's when we go over to the weaker ones that we start to see the problems, and that's where the problems are. Starting with the NASDAQ, which is the broader composite. The NASDAQ can't even lift back up. Remember, the NASDAQ was trying to get back up. Well, first of all, it was trying to get back up and over the breakdown bar. It got close, right, and failed. Couldn't get to it. Didn't quite get to it couldn't do anything about it. Now it falls back, coming back up, and even on a day where the NASDAQ was strong comparatively, it still couldn't get anything going. It has the potential ABCD structure that would take it to the other breakdown bar. So that's the, that's the upside, if you will, possibility, right? But if I go look at the other two indexes, we'll go with the NDX next. Right, the NDX is the concentrated NASDAQ, if you will, the NDX 100. That one goes up, and again, it's trying to get over the breakdown bar. It got over it once before, failed, came back. That was here. It gets over that bar as well today, and the breakdown bar, and fails again. Right, so this structure that's in place here on the weekly is the one you need to take a look at because that one is the one that's actually um, and I'm going to grab it and bring over the chart that's the one that's actually taking place here that you need to notice because here it's not an ABCD up it's the potential for an ABCD down if this thing fails right and it's going to go take out a bunch of lows if it happens so that's the downside and the way this is acting 
it's acting as if that downside is going to come into play because once again, it goes up here and it fails. The S&P failed today as well, but this one to me is more important. Volume here 20.7 going into 21, going into 24. So that is a failure. And then if we look at the Russell, the Russell also fails again today. The big, okay, so let's start back here. The hammer reversal bar, top was 1123.77. You did 373 on it. You come up into it with 403, right, which is great. But then you come up and you test the 403 today and you're testing again. You only do it with 341. You go over it, you're back under it, you're failing again. Now you are still over the 1123.77, but you're failing on the attempt to get up and over this is resistance zone that is formed. That, even though it's not as clean as the NDX, it also is a failure. Volume's not there, folks. As in, in matter of fact, if you were watching it intraday, when they got over the key level intraday, right, last five days, they got a quick pop to the top side, right? And then it just reeled it right back in. And I was telling, you know, the folks in the teaching trade room, the TNT room, what, what we're seeing is a pop as a result of short covering, not new buyers. And if in fact it fails and comes back in, that's exactly what it was. Sure enough, as the day went on, that's exactly what happened. Folks are not willing to pay up at these levels. Now, it could be because we're in front of that number, right? We, we had the, the PMI number was pretty good today, not bad. You had PMI over in China, it was a little bit better. Manufacturing wasn't that good. You had the PMI come out in uh, Britain, England. That one was pretty good. You had May Day, most of the markets closed around the world. So you'll get, get some more numbers tomorrow, plus you're gonna get the un unemployment number. And we also had yelling this morning, kind of pumping things up as well. So the numbers today, again, not bad. Not, you know, not great, but not bad at all. Tomorrow, employment number, I don't believe that number is going to matter. It's already priced in to expect that employment's growing. But, um, you know, if it comes in disappointing, I think this market's going to get hit. If it comes in about where it's expected, I don't think this market's going anywhere. If it comes in stronger, we're probably going to get a pop up, but I suspect they're going to reel it right back in again. Let's go look at the sectors together. <clears throat> so if I pop over to the sectors and we'll start with the transports on the transports you know that was actually the strongest uh, sector today it was really pushing up finally had a little bit of volume come into it you're coming back up to this high you don't have the volume and I just I don't see how it's going to get over this 310 182. Yeah, it, it just looks like it's going to die up here. It looks like it's going to die right up into this, this area, and that's where it's coming into right now. So, um, you know, good day today, but I don't know that it goes anywhere else. The semiconductors. This, this index can't, you know, remember, the semis were the ones that wouldn't give it up, right? These guys were pushing and pushing back here when everybody else was struggling, right? And then they just kept going. Well, now they can't get anywhere, right? And they're still holding here. You know, they're still holding all these lows, but folks, there's a bunch of them. And they're all lined up. And when you get a situation like this, if you do start to push back down and the volume does start to escalate, which is what has been happening, right? The setup here is to just take these out and blow right back down. And this particular index or sector can do that. So the semiconductors not looking so good in my opinion. And let's see, the SOX looks the same. Still looks like that one's gonna finally blow it out here pretty soon is the way it's set up. And you got one, two, three swing points on this time frame. XLB, uh, materials. The materials couldn't get anything. Remember, they had the big blowout volume on the way down. They come back up. They really don't have anything. These are going to come back down. They also have multiple swing points 
uh, one, two, three forming as well. And again, like everything else, everything's gone up here and there's nothing under it if it starts to cave in. XLE. We had Exxon Mobil come out today. We had the uh, uh, Chevron, uh, not Chevron, but ConocoPhillips. Uh, let me see where those closed because this started to give it up today. So Exxon Mobil closes down on earnings. ConocoPhillips, and they missed on their earnings. ConocoPhillips actually was stronger and still couldn't break out though. It doesn't really have the volume as it's trying to. That looks like it's going to come back in as well. Tomorrow morning we get Chevron, and Chevron looks like it's done to me. So this one looks like it's going to come back in as well. So if, if I look at those three, which are the biggest three, you throw in like Halliburton and a couple others. What is Halliburton? It's uh, H-A-L, I believe. Yeah, and that one's, uh, that one had a nice push. That one's a range trade. So anyway, they, you know, the all services have been stronger, but the XLE does look like it's uh, probably going to come back in some. Going to the XLF, that one can't get anywhere. That one's going to come in. XLI. That one still looks okay, but uh, not much, much going on there. XLK. Oh man, did they fail again? 36.50. <laughs> they did. And they fell on lighter volume again. Amazing. So you got a breakdown bar here. They, you know, the, the XLK has been trying to get over this now for, uh, you know, multiple sessions here. And today gets over it, right? That was that pop I was talking about. It happened on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was the driving force today. And, uh, and then gives it up. Can't hold it. No buyers at higher prices, folks. They're just not there. XLP. These are the safety boys, and they're still hanging, still looking fine. XLU is the other one, and that one also looking fine. XLV is uh, actually the biotechs were up today, and XLV got a push, but the XLV, let's see, 2058, 25, closes right at it and test this on less volume and fails. That one's also going to come back. And the last one's XLY, and so you get the drift here. None of them can get up there. None of them can get over the key areas. They're all set up to try to come back in again. And, and I know that, you know, these indexes are hanging there, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see some sort of pop on that number in the morning. But, you know, if you're chasing the number higher in the morning, be careful because uh, it may cave in on you by the end of the day. Let's go to the bonds again. So we had the breakout. You know, let me pull this on a weekly right quick. Okay, so, so I had a member, another member, and it's great having all the guys in the room there with me talking about this bar. It was a good insight. I had not noticed this, but you got a huge volume bar here on the bonds. And we're coming right into it. So that area is top of the zone. Let's get the price point. That was 11, 12. So 112.14. We close at 112.02. And that will be tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. But we're coming up there and we don't have the volume. So the bonds may finally find their resistance here as they come into this number. Now if I go to the weekly right the weekly actually suggests that it's going to try to get higher into this bar and that's uh 11408 so this 112 to 114 area is kind of a key area being the monthly and the weekly a lot of times you'll see you know maybe the monthly violated and then come back in because it's going to exert pressure uh, and you also got a lot of pressure here but now on the flip side of it you've got great support underneath it. So, so the ideal case here for the bond bulls is for this to finish out this ABCD structure, which is, which is trying to do, right, on the weekly, which takes it right up to this, this bar. And then you get your pullback, right, all the way back down into here. You can play both sides of that thing and eventually see this thing go even higher because the case here is 
it's trying to put in a bottom. It's been trying to put in a bottom. The bottom is being formed, and this thing's going to try to go higher before it's all over, it looks like to me. But it's probably going to take a while. So that's the bond picture, and then I want to go to gold right quick. And the reason for it is I was watching gold and telling myself that I really didn't want to get involved with it here as it comes back into this bar. And I'm on the weekly. That bar is 122.72 is the bottom. You know, we've been hitting it here 122.84, 123, and then today 123.06. And pre-market, these things were trading down into this bar again, 122.72 area. They, they spike it down in there, but they can't hold it. It kind of bounces back up. What, what I wasn't noticing and, and what I should be noticing, and as I looked at it more today, I did notice, is that you've actually got this support zone actually is a pretty good support zone, right, off of these bars. And so as we come in into there, we don't have anything like the volume that traded back in that zone and as these bond, as these um, gold market, as this gold market tries to put in a bottom, right? It's finding this kind of structure that you want as it puts in that bottom. And if I come in and look at it a different way, and I look at this low, 123.11, has 34 on it. Then you had 33 on it, and this morning you had 27. So you can see, and the week week isn't done, so we'll end up with about the same amount. But you can see those compared to the 46, the volume's not there. And every morning when they're breaking down into the bottom of this bar, that volume isn't there. That makes me think this thing is going to flip back around and try to head higher. And if I bring it back now to the daily, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Again, the low over here, and this is what I've been watching, the low over here. But now you've got this low. That low is 122.84. This morning you were underneath it. The, the, the print on the daily was only 123.06, but the volume is not there. You, you see the volume of 8.7, 6.6. It's just not there. This looks like it is going to flip around again and go back up there and try to hit this area. And that the big bar it's got to get over is this one on the April 15th, 125.70. So gold is, at least right now, looks like it's stuck in this range and is at the lower end of it again. So if you're interested, that's a place for you maybe to check out a trade. And then if we go over and look at silver, this is the other piece of it. If you look at silver, silver had broken down big volume yesterday. And what does it do today? <laughs> it just plays out and flips around and does a reversal, right? And closes back over it. So silver actually is signaling the same sort of a I want to pop scenario. And if you look at it on the weekly, the low is 1826. You come into 1816, you're doing 38.3. The weekly's got 61 on it. And over here it's got 88 on it. Right? The, excuse me, 34. The 88 is, is the pop up. But the big bars are back over here, 93 and 83, just like with gold. This also looks like it wants to flip around. So the metals trade, to me, looks like it's not. It's just not ready to break down. If, it, if it's going to break down, it doesn't look like it's here. Looks like it's going to pop back up again first. All right, so uh, those are the main things I want to cover. Let me see if there are any questions. And nothing in there. Uh, you know, folks, you can text me at support. Uh, well, you can email me, support at tatoday.com. I'll try to take your questions here in the last five minutes. If you have them, jot them in. Or you can text me, 303-912-9110. And let me check the email and see. Yeah, there is one here. Let's see what this is. Okay, so... This is John asking me about, well, it's a general question, actually. It's asking me what would make me bullish on this market. All right. Um, well, uh, what would make me bullish? Well, I think the thing that would make me bullish, you know, 
I mean, I, I, I consider this too, but what, what would make me bullish is for those stocks that have been abandoned to actually find buyers at higher prices. And I'm talking about the NDX and the small caps, right? So if these, if these can actually push up and push higher, get over this bar, you know, I would have to have it actually have to at least tone down my negativity, let's say. We do have, you know, a situation that's already taken place. I'm going back to the Russell now. That, that said the Russell was going to try to trade sideways, right? Remember, we had the break above the swing point low, so it didn't retest, it didn't quote unquote retest regen. But I pointed out before that there were other cases that was the case as well, and they eventually did come back down, right, in these other ones. And, and there was three of them, and two of the three, it did the exact same thing it's done here. So now it's three out of four it's done this. That does put it in some sort of a range trade when it does it for a while, but so far, you know, the buyers don't show up when they have to, and that's at higher prices. You know, you're not going to buy something at a higher price unless you really believe you need to pay up, right? You're going you're gonna to sell it at the higher price and buy it back at the cheaper price until you believe there's not a cheaper price. Right? The future doesn't hold a cheaper price. There's reason to believe that it's going to keep going. And that, when I see evidence of that, that's when I would change my tune. All right, let's see here. Tommy's asking me about GDX. Well, that's a good take. Let's see what they look like, given the gold take. And it looks the same. It looks like it's going to flip around as well. Yeah, let me see it on the weekly. Yeah. It also looks like it's going to flip around. Let me look at the small caps. And not nearly as clean here. I think a lot of these small caps are in trouble. And the reason they're in trouble is, is the cost of gold being as cheap as it is now, the cost of producing it is starting to erode their potential to make profits. And so it's making it hard for the small miners, which have you know huge interest costs and so forth, you know, they're having a hard time making their bills. And so uh, that's making it more difficult. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, um, you know, it's harder on the small caps. But yeah, GDX looks like it wants to turn and go back the other way. All right, folks, so employment number tomorrow. We may see a little pop in the morning, but if it is, I'd be careful about chasing anything here. It looks to me like these markets just aren't ready to go. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, you know, that's the way it goes, but that's the way it looks to me. Gonna take, uh, it's going to take something special to move this market higher, and I'm not sure the employment number is going to do it. You know, as always, I ask you, you know, tell a friend. Tell one, tell two, tell three, tell as many as you want. I, um, I do this show for your benefit. Of course, you know, I hope that eventually you'll see the benefit of what I do, and the whole concept of neoclassical and how it comes to the advantage. We have two packages, our tools, trade with me, you can bundle them together, reasonable prices. You can actually get these things discounted if you just refer a friend. You don't have to be a member to do that. If you are, I appreciate you doing it. Have a great night. Take care of yourself. Until next time, I'm L.A. This is and was your daily T.A. wrap. Have a great night. Take care of yourself. And until next time, I'll see you then. Good night, folks.